let's talk a little bit about Zephyr. She is a social activist. She is an educator for yes. <laughs> um, people of lower classes, including others. She wants to make sure that they have equal rights because she also feels very strongly that they that right. they are not necessarily people, but they but they deserve to <laughs> yes. have to have rights. She's also a vegetarian. <laughs> Um, she doesn't drink, although she might break that rule once or twice. Um, she's a, a bit of a do-gooder, and I think everyone in the story kind of points to the fact right. that oh, she's she's almost right. too good. She, I, I, I kind of like the idea that, that Zephyr is trying so hard and that everybody kind of makes fun of her for it because there's a lot of contradictions in what she's doing. And I think, uh, you know, I'm writing a second book now, and, like, these are getting more exposed. <laughs> But I just, I love that she tries so hard and that her earnestness is, is kind of a good quality and also a big detriment in a lot of ways, especially in like how the book progresses. And so I, I you know, I, I know people like that. I feel in some ways I admire like the way that she is, she can be like that, but it's also, it, she takes it too far. And I think the way that ways that she goes, like she, you know, she, sometimes she won't eat, sometimes she'll just keep, you know, she'll lecture people, she'll go, you know, she's, Zephyr is not. She doesn't do things by half measures. <laughs> right. And I think one of the other contradictions that we see is she keeps some blades strapped to her just in case, just in right. case a, a renegade vampire right. attacks exactly. her. Right, exactly. She's ready to defend herself. And she really does. She's she's very underestimated, I think, uh, throughout a lot of the novel um, until kind of that these pivotal moments happen when she does have to save everyone. And she pretty much pulls it off pretty well. <laughs> yes. Well, Zephyr, Zephyr has daddy issues, so the, <laughs> the, the daddy issues come and I, I, that was actually another thing that I really wanted to do because a lot of times the heroines in urban fantasy will have absent parents or mostly murdered parents and it, it's kind of ba their backstory and I, I like the idea of her having some kind, being on the other side of things. Now she's a social activist, but she used to be something else and she used New York to like reinvent herself. And she's, but she still has, you know, her dad, and he taught her to vampire hunt, and he wants her to be a real defender, and and she doesn't, she doesn't want that. On the other hand, she knows all of this stuff, and her parents come at a very inopportune moment in the story. That is, that is a great scene. I'm not, I'm not going to give it away, except to say, you don't want your parents walking in on what her parents walking oh, in. On. Oh no. <laughs> Which leads me, which I guess is a pretty good segue into the hero of the story. Uh, if, if we can call him a hero. Right. He's not necessarily this this good guy. No. He's, he's <laughs> definitely, but he's definitely redeemable, I guess. Yes. And of course I'm talking about the genie. Yes, Amir. Amir. <laughs> I, I like bad boys. I was thinking about this the other day. You know, I, I have a thing for anti-heroes. I feel like, you know, oh, I, I love Edward. You know, Edward is fine, but mm -hmm. he's, he's really, really, it's, he, all he does is dote on Bella, and there's a, yeah. a strain of romantic hero where like the doting is their their main characteristic. <laughs> and I just something about guys who who are are smart and witty and have a lot of charm, but like aren't always good. <laughs> don't yeah. always do the things <laughs> that they should do, or maybe they regret it later, but they just don't do it. And I, I, he definitely <laughs> he definitely falls into that category. Yeah. I see that. <laughs> Because and a lot of times he's he is like um, I don't want to say that she's an afterthought, but he definitely has an agenda, and yeah. he he is following that agenda. And at times he really does use her and her background, and and Zephyr definitely feels that and, and knows partway through okay this so something's happening, and and she accepts that because she is she is a very accepting person, not yeah. not necessarily a pushover, <laughs> but she allows people to be who they are. Right, and Zephyr feels like she needs to. Unless there's a real reason to not offer help, she feels that she can't refuse help to people, and so he takes advantage of that. He knows that if he asks her for help, and she know, and that he, she feels that she's the only person who can give it, she can't say no. And that's that's part of what I mean when I say Zephyr goes to extremes and it hurts her because she she can't say no. And even when it's a really good idea to say no, she probably should say no to Amir. Except you know he's he's sexy and keeps showing up and offers her money for the rent that she's given away to somebody else. <laughs> 